Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a CT of the head without contrast. The patient had a stroke a few days ago and this head CT was done because of change in the mental status of the patient. So I will allow you as usual to look through the images, get an overall feeling for what you have here. And I want you to remember that the important thing in any exercise such as this is to be able to identify the abnormality, describe it, and describe what anatomy is affected. That's basically it. You need to do that in a very accurate and as simple a manner as, pro as possible. So let's look here. What do we have? Well, we have a large area of abnormality in the right cerebral hemisphere. That's a good, simple statement that no one can disagree with, and there's more to be said, but I think it's important that you learn to come out with one statement after another that are all correct, and not let one sentence lead into another. So you don't want to say uh, there is a large, low attenuation area in the right frontal lobe, and it seems to be an infarct, uh, but there's a high density area in it also, and blah, blah, blah. It just makes it confusing for the reading, for, for the reader. So look at this and think how you would succinctly describe this abnormality. Okay, I'm going to let you see a little bit more down there. Okay, so how about this? How about there is a large, low attenuation abnormality in the right cerebral hemisphere, period. And if you're going to describe a finding to someone, it's vital that you learn to put periods at the end of the sentence, meaning don't just run on from one sentence to another, because then what you'll do is you'll just keep talking until you come to a point where you're uncertain, and then you'll say something wrong and then they'll comment that that's incorrect and you've gotten virtually no credit for the things that you have said. So, there is a large low attenuation abnormality in the right cerebral hemisphere. You don't say the word period, but you think it. This involves a large portion of the right middle cerebral artery territory. There is an associated high attenuation area measuring two or two and a half centimeters deep in the area of the abnormality adjacent to the region of the right lateral ventricle. The frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle is effaced by the mass effect from this low attenuation abnormality. The cortical sulci, which are seen well on the left side are effaced particularly in the frontal area overlying the right hemispheric low attenuation abnormality. Okay, so what else do we have here? Well, if you look down here, what vessel is this? Maybe you know that, maybe you don't, but the circle of Willis is right around this area in the supracellar and prepontine region, and that gives rise to middle cerebral artery on both sides, anterior cerebral artery on both sides, and a posterior cerebral artery on both sides. And then the basilar artery supplies most of the posterior fossa. You can get a little sense of some of the vessels. So here are vessels that are connecting the right middle cerebral artery to the right anterior cerebral artery and this is the A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery. Not real important at this point but just for those who want a little bit more to think about. And if you look here the density of the middle cerebral artery is denser than the density of normal vessels. So this is not just blood flowing in the middle cerebral artery so you don't have comparable areas, especially to this over here. 
but this is thrombus. So you have a dense MCA sign, a dense MCA sign representing clot in the middle cerebral artery. You have an infarct in the right middle cerebral artery territory or a large portion of it. There's actually a posterior division of the right middle cerebral artery which covers a lot of the area that is relatively spared here on the right. Here, posterior right temporal and portions of the right parietal lobe in this area which would not fall under the the posterior cerebral artery territory. Okay, there is mass effect and there's a small focal hemorrhage. So this is generally referred to in a patient that has had an infarct and there is a prior study which did not show hemorrhage. So this is hemorrhagic transformation. So it's a an infarct that was originally bland and now has demonstrated hemorrhagic transformation. Okay, that's very worrisome because if you see just a dense MCA sign and an infarct, you may well anticoagulate. But if the patient has already started to bleed into the infarct, you might want to hold off on anticoagulants, of course. Okay? So a fairly straightforward case of an MCA infarct with a dense MCA sign and hemorrhagic transformation, relatively sparing the posterior division of the right middle cerebral artery. As far as points of anatomy, this is the cerebellar vermis, the midline worm-like, which is what vermis means, the midline vermis protruding up through the tentorial incisura. The tentorial incisura is like a tent, and that's why it's called the tent or tentorium. And it, it separates in more manner like this, where the cerebral hemispheres are up here, above the tentorium, and the cerebellum and pons and brainstem are beneath the tentorium. So if we go down into the posterior fossa, you see pons, two cerebellar hemispheres, fourth ventricle, you go up and you start seeing these lines, which you really can't see, what you really see more than a line itself is a distinction between the, the appearance of the tissues, the cerebellum here, and the posterior left parietal lobe or, or the left occipital lobe in this area. And this just dem demarcates it very nicely because you have cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, which is dark, just like in the lateral ventricles. And that darkness outlines this part of the cerebellar vermis and the margin of the tentorium. And this is called a tentorial incisura meaning it's kind of like it's been cut open, thereby revealing the structures beneath the tentorium. Here you have the third ventricle, left lateral ventricle, right lateral ventricle. Let's go back through that, now going down. Here you have the left lateral ventricle. This is the temporal horn of the left lateral ventricle. Most of the right lateral ventricle is effaced by mass effect, but as we go down, we see the two thalami, which are predominantly relay nuclei for sensory information coming from the body to the brain. And the third ventricle, of course, empties into the cerebral aqueduct and goes to the fourth ventricle. Well, here you can see the third ventricle, and this is part of it posteriorly. And if you follow that downward like this, you can see it right here, ending in, this is the cerebral aqueduct, and then it ends in the third ventricle here, third ventricle. So you have that anatomy nicely depicted here. You have uh, an area of cisternal space located between the cerebral peduncles the interpeduncular cistern, funny word, interpeduncular. If we go down low into the posterior fossa, you see two vertebral arteries coming up on each side of the medulla. Those are the vertebral arteries which merge. Here you can see one on each side, 
As you go up, they merge to form a single basilar artery. Now this basilar artery is swinging all over the place, not literally, but it's very tortuous, bendy, and so here it is here, and that's the basilar artery. So the basilar artery then comes up to the posterior aspect of the circle of Willis, which is in this area, and it gives rise to posterior cerebral artery on each on each side, which you don't see very well here. There's a PCOM going from the middle cerebral artery on both sides, the origin of the middle cerebral artery, to the posterior cerebral artery on each side, and then the two A1 segments of the anterior cerebral artery give rise to the anterior cerebral arteries distal to that, the A2 segments, which curve up in the midline superiorly in the interhemispheric fissure. Now if you're not yet comfortable with the arterial anatomy like that, that's fine. There'll be other lectures and there are some posted, but I want you to be just generally familiar with the anatomic landmarks here. Notice also that this area of brain is affected and this is the anterior portion of the right temporal lobe so there is an adjacent portion of the right frontal lobe inferiorly which connects with this area of infarct in the right temporal lobe anteriorly. This discrepancy in the anatomy you're seeing is because this cut is, is more inferiorly positioned on the right side, meaning the patient's head was tilted to the left, bringing the right side of the head up more cephalad, and so there's often a discrepancy and that can be an impediment to our interpretation of images and a good reason why proper positioning of the patient is a very good thing. Uh, lastly, let me point out that I uh, have put a lecture up called Cingulate Sulcus Key to the Hemispheres and if you haven't seen that yet you should look for it. I think it's really worthwhile. And this is the cingulate sulcus. The cingulate sulcus is just these two very conspicuous paired curved structures that are sulci, or small fissures is basically what that means. And you can see how it doesn't really have the look of this, this pairing here, which one is much smaller. And as you follow them down, you see that they are actually curving down and then forward to follow the curvature of the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is this tissue here, which is between the hemispheres, and that's what allows the, the cerebral hemispheres to communicate. So large band of fibers, huge band, millions and millions of fibers that compose the corpus callosum, and when you course superiorly from the corpus callosum, there are these little sulci that are hard to see in the axial plane but much more clear on an MRI. So these are the cingulate sulci and the cingulate sulcus is one that goes down from this point and follows, let's see, goes down from this point and then follows around the corpus callosum. But this is where you need to look for it. Because if you see it here, you can say, let me move forward one and over, and this is the central sulcus. That makes this motor cortex and this sensory cortex. Again, when you know where the central sulcus is, which is just forward and to the side on either side, although this side is all squished, forward and over to the side, you have the central sulcus that makes this motor cortex, this sensory cortex, and that makes this area forward, all frontal lobe, it makes this area backward, all parietal lobe, until you get down and posterior enough to be into the occipital lobe, and there is a sulcus there, the parietal occipital lobe that is best seen on sagittal images in, on MRI. Okay, here you have the vermis poking through the tentorial incisura. Here's a calcified pineal 
gland, uh, perfectly normal. They normally calcified. I don't worry about these unless they are over one centimeter in diameter. Okay, and here is the midbrain. And here you can see these little bumps. They're like little hills. And those are colliculi. And those are the inferior colliculi there, I believe. And more superiorly, you have two little ones here, the superior colliculi. Colliculi means small hills. And so you have superior colliculi and inferior colliculi. The superior colliculi have really hardly any significant function in the human, but they have a lot of role in vision in more primitive or less developed animals like prosimian primates, galago, bush babies, tree shrews, things of that sort. They rely heavily on their superior colliculus. But for us, the inferior colliculi, which are more prominent in this case, are relay nuclei for auditory information. So we need our inferior colliculi in order to have normal hearing. Lateral ventricle, third ventricle, pineal, posterior to the third ventricle, top of the vermis poking through the tentorial incisura, cerebellum, fourth ventricle, pons, basilar artery, this is the region of the cella tersica. Here you can see the orbits. And here's the optic nerve with the extraocular muscles. Let's see, we have to go down a little farther here. Optic nerve, extraocular muscles. And uh, I think that's enough for right now.